So for the colors, what I do first is I add the right values to the characters. Um, try to think of darker values for darker colors, kind of like the cape of Batman will be a darker value than the Batman suit or the, or the utility belt. And just give those elements the, the right value before I start doing any colors. Um, I usually do that just by adding a uh, multiply uh, layer on top of my drawing on Photoshop. Um, after that, I have everything flat from some, someone else uh, does the flats for me. And I just, what I'm doing right now is just fixing those flats, the little details that I, it's a, it's, it's a very boring <laughs> part of the process, I guess you can say, just because it's just painting here and there, some parts that, that, that we're missing or making sure everything works right. But uh, this will be a big payoff at the end just because I'll be able to manipulate my image with so much. Um, for this particular piece, I knew from the start that I wanted a very dramatic red light within contrast for my foreground elements will have more more of a greenish type of uh, lighting and just by having those two color values in general um i didn't want to like over complicate myself with uh, a lot of coloring options i wanted to have like a big dramatic uh, reddish scene so uh, that was the idea uh, when i first started this and if you see, like, I'm pretty much just lighting the whole scene with those two values right now. Um, and try to keep my, my, my layers fairly simple. I don't like to do the overcomplicated 100 layers thing. Uh, I'm more of a traditional guy, so I try to keep it as simple as possible. Right now, I'm just doing selections and just with color dodge on my layers, I just add those red elements on top of a of a base layer. Another key element for me here is using the smudge brush just to like blend in better and have those smooth transitions on my select lines. Um, it's all about finding the right balance between hard edge and soft edge. So uh, I first start with a hard selection, which will give me those hard edges, but and then I go over with the smudge and try to soften any any areas that need to be softened, like the chin or some muscles. And if you notice right now, I'm just working with two layers, just my basic layer with my red and green tones and just another layer with the color dodge mode. Then I'm doing a couple of more uh, gradients with the multiply. But then again, my flats are what's really helping me here just to select and deselect any areas that I need to work on. Now with the help of my flats, I'm bringing those elements from the background a little bit forward just by adding a darker value. And that's a key thing to mastering is just values are so much more important than color. You, you could get away with basic color just by having the right values on your pieces. Right now I'm just using my flat layers just to colorize any elements on Robin.
then again, it's understanding the the proper uh, materials and how they reflect light. Like I, I know the glove and the cape have a more reflective material compared to the Batman's outfit, which has a more of a mate uh, finish. So just by giving those hints of highlights uh, makes the whole suit more dynamic and, and realistic in a way. Now this uh, I, I leave my highlights at the late stages. Um, I, I find that going with the highlights uh, soon at the beginning of the image sometimes just unbalances the, the right values. So I just make sure first I get the right values with all the shadows and then just add highlights at the very, very end. And that's that's another rule that I always try to follow. It's just like don't do highlights at the beginning stages. Just try to get your volume with as many shadows first and then do the highlights later on. And for now, it's just pretty much just polishing, just making sure that I'm rendering the materials the proper way. Whatever it's leather should feel like leather, have the proper highlights and shadows out of leather. But whatever it's latex has those uh, highlights just that the latex will have. And just give the elements on the background, whatever it's just drywall will have the drywall elements and, and, and texture to it. And just making sure that I covered those textures and those uh, material behaviors on everything around um, makes the whole scene more believable. Right now I'm going over with a pencil and just adding those little highlights with the pencil. I really like using the pencil for this just because it has a slight texture to it that I think works very well when rendering um, hard materials like this. And right now I'm just adding more effects, just dramatizing the whole scene, just to give that dangerous feel that Gotham City is known for. So just by giving a couple of um, cloudy elements with the brushes here and there, 
and just reinforcing the lights on the neon sign um, just makes the image pop so much more with so little. I really like putting these finishing touches on my images just because it transforms into something much more powerful just by adding a couple of lights. Right now I decided that I didn't like uh, visually the blue elements on that corner. So I decided to switch everything just to red, just to keep uh, reinforcing the composition of the colors again. And I think this worked so much better now. Um, for some reason, the reds read more as a danger, which that's what I wanted to portray in the cover. It's just the dangerous vibe or feel of Gotham City. So having that sign being blue just made everything look more, um, I guess, friendlier, you can say. Which is not the vibe that I was going for for this cover. And that's about it. Um, you can watch the real-time process of this video and get uh, all my brushes that I use for this and some of the original art elements uh, by joining my Patreon. Um, I usually try to upload a process video every month. So if you like this, please just like, comment, and share.